Okay, everyone, in this video, we're going to go through the data ingest piece. So how do we convert our data source, in this case, my blog full of MDX files? How do we chunk and embed and convert that into uh, text that machines can understand, build a knowledge base that's backed by a vector database? And then how do we uh, ensure that the ingest worked correctly and do some smoke tests on our actual data? So to begin with, let's review the target data source. In this case, is, is my portfolio site. This is a public open source project, which makes it easy to clone. And the only thing we need to notice here is the, the relative file path structure. So there's portfolio, that's the project, source, and then app, because I'm using the app router with the latest uh, Next.js. And then every subdirectory under the blog directory maps to an individual blog post, right? So if you were to go to zachproser.com forward slash blog forward slash 2023 hyphen wins, then you would get this post. And under each of the subdirectories is a page.mdx file. So this is the final target that we're going to be ingesting, but notice that there are many page.mdx files across the project that are nested. And these MDX files are a combination of just, you know, writing, natural writing, and also some React components or Next.js components that can be intermingled. So now that we've reviewed our target data source, let's take a look at the Jupyter Notebook. And again, this is open source. I included it, but there's a link in the description of this video that will point you to the open source repository where you can get this same Jupyter Notebook in case you want to run the same process on your own data. And of course, when you do that, you will need to swap in your own OpenAI API keys, Pinecone API key, as well as uh, point you know your index to something that's probably not named Zach hyphen portfolio. So to quickly level set, let's just take an overlook at the notebook. It's, it's relatively straightforward. You'll notice there's not a ton of code here, which is really nice because Langchain and other libraries are going to do the heavy lifting for us. So the first thing that we're going to do is clone my repository site. And again, because this is open source, this is super easy. It's a single line of code. So as we're, we're cloning this repository, it's going to put it in a workspace that this Jupyter notebook has access to. And that is the way in which we're able to run the subsequent code, which is going to, you know, load all of my MDX files using a pattern into memory. And then we're going to chunk them, embed them, upsert them to a pinecone vector database. But of course, the first step is that we need to actually get our data. And so the first step for that reason is to clone my repository site. Now that we've got that clone done, we're going to install all of the Python dependencies that we use in subsequent cells. And uh, we'll just talk quickly through what I'm installing here. So it's primarily Langchain. Uh, there's various Langchain packages like Langchain Community, Langchain Pinecone, Langchain OpenAI, Unstructured, which is an, an API that uh, helps you ingest unstructured data and puts it in a clean format. And then Langchain Text Splitters. So those are the, the primary things that we're concerned with here. And then you notice we do the, the imports here. All right, and our imports are done. And so now we're ready to start actually interacting with the repository that was cloned. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a directory loader. And the directory loader is a, a class from Langchain that simplifies loading all of those files that I showed you in the nested format where we've got, you know, circ app blog, then each individual blog post as a subdirectory. And under that subdirectory for each post, there is a page.mdx file. And so what we're saying in this line of code is, starting at the portfolio folder that's local to this Jupyter notebook, I want you to use a glob pattern, which is to say every subdirectory that you find and under it, every file that you find that ends in a .mdx uh, file extension, right? And so now we have all the loader prepared, right? So we specify the target of where it's gonna go, the pattern it's going to use to find docs. And when we run it, now it's going to actually ingest those MDX files from my site into memory. And then from there, we can begin operating on them in subsequent cells. Now, all of the documents that I've got in my site are loaded into memory. And the next thing that we're going to do is just do a sanity check. And instead of printing out all the docs, which is going to be gigantic, I'll just print out one and we'll just sanity check what it looks like. And so you can see here is a document. This is a Langchain document. And by the way, if you're in a Jupyter Notebook context, you don't need to wrap the statement that you're trying to look at in a print. You can just 
call it directly. And so by saying docs one, we're saying, I would just want to see one document. This is a lang chain document. And then you can see that it's got properties like page content and then metadata. So, so this looks good. We've got a chunk or we have a, a lang chain document that is ready for further processing. And we have all the docs loaded here. We could also do a sanity check like this and do something like len docs. Okay, and so that we see that there's there's 131 uh, MDX files in my site. That sounds about right. So the next thing we need to do is set up the API keys for the external services that we're going to use. So the first is OpenAI. We're using their embeddings endpoint, uh, their embeddings model. And so that when we pass our data into the OpenAI embeddings model, what we're going to get back is a list of floating point numbers or vectors that represent the semantic meaning and the relationships between the entities in the text that we provided it. And then with Pinecone, we're going to, you know, create if needed and upsert into a vector database, all the vectors we get back from our embedding model. There's another piece here to be aware of, and that's just a general kind of a public service announcement on the correct way to manage secrets when you're doing Jupyter Notebooks. I know it's very tempting to hard code your, your API key directly in the notebook. And you might think I'm the only person using this. What does it matter? But as soon as your notebook becomes something you're going to try and share with a team or publish online, it's very easy to forget you've done that. And it's very easy to leak an API key that's tied to one of your credit cards. So instead, please use the native secrets integration that both Google Colab and Kaggle have, where you can define your secrets like this. And with a slightly modified call, you can use the user data service to get that API key or that secret out securely and uh, pop it into an environment variable if you wish. All right, so we have all of our docs loaded in memory. We have the third-party service integration set up and ready to go. It's time to create our embeddings model, specify the index name that we want, and then we're going to use Langchain's recursive character text splitter to chunk our documents in a sane way so that we get the attempt to preserve the most semantic meaning. Uh, and then we're going to create a vector store and note that this is a single line of code because Langchain is doing all the heavy lifting here for us. It's going to check and see, does that index already exist? If not, it's going to create it. It's going to use our embeddings model and it's going to take the split docs that we pass it and up, upsert them in a sensible way in a batch, in a loop, right? So if you didn't use Langchain for this piece, you would have a bunch of extra work, at least a full cell of Python, where you would need to loop through the, the docs bind together the metadata that you want to upsert and then upsert and handle errors, handle showing progress, et cetera. So if you're in a hurry or if you're trying to do something quickly, the default Langchain vector store integration for Pinecone works great and it's handling a lot for you under the hood. And so that's why we're able to get this pipeline working with just a few lines of code, essentially. And over here on the right, you can see I've got my Pinecone console up. I'm going to create a new index that we can use for this project. And so I come over here, hit create index. One of the key considerations when you're creating a new index is to make sure that the dimensionality of your index matches the embedding model that you're planning on using. So let's say that I am going to name this index Zach portfolio. The choice of, of dimensions, the number of, of dimensions I need to enter is determined by the embedding model I'm using. So on the left, because I'm using OpenAI's text embedding three large model, I know that that outputs a dimensionality of 3072. And so that's the same uh, dimensions that I need when I'm creating my Pinecone index. I'm going to pick serverless and AWS US East one, which is reasonably close to me. And the nice thing too, is that if you are a new user of Pinecone serverless, then we have a free tier, which is sufficient for about, I believe it's 300,000 vectors at a dimensionality of 1,536. So uh, only generous enough to play around with it, even put an app application in production. So you'll have to wait a second or two until your Pinecone index is initialized. And then when we come over here and run this cell, we're essentially setting up the index, setting up the embeddings model that we're going to use, and then creating a, a Pinecone vector store class from the Langchain library, and then returning a reference to it. We use that reference to the vector store to ask a simple query, what is the programming bug? And in my, in the case of my data and my the corpus of blog posts I've upserted, uh, this is a a blog post I wrote about you know finding your passion with programming and ensuring that you actually like and enjoy programming. And so this query serves as an excellent sanity check that my data store is healthy, right? And so what I can see coming back is exactly the chunk 
that is the most relevant from that blog post where I describe, you know, having the programming bug and what it means. And so even with this, you know, a couple lines of code, like a handful of lines of code, we have essentially created the knowledge base in the vector store. We've used Langchain to simplify the loading of MDX documents, even in a nested tree structure. And then we've created the actual knowledge base that we're going to hit with our RAG pipeline in order to do the retrieval phase, in order to get back these chunks of context that the LLM, OpenAI's, you know, ChatGPT 4.0 at time of this recording, is going to use to answer the end user's question. Now, the other sanity check that you can do at this point is to come over to your Pinecone console and take a look at your index here. There is a vector count, and that just provides a nice sanity check. I know from having worked on this project over the last couple, you know, a week or so, that that's the correct vector count because once my blog posts are chunked, that's the amount that uh, it results in. And you can also just scroll down and do a sanity check and see, okay, here's one. Uh, and then I can see my metadata has both the source to the original blog post and then also the text, right? And so this is just another sanity check. If you wanted to, you could even, you know, issue queries by vectors and just look at metrics. So lots of handy stuff that's already baked in here if you weren't already aware. All right, and then I, I like to just have a final sanity check cell, one or two of them, where I can come and interact with my vector store or my index without creating it again. Especially if I'm, let's say I'm in the middle of shipping a new feature, I get back a query result that's kind of strange to me. I don't understand why that happened. And I want to ensure that my knowledge store is still healthy then I have a cell where it's uh, very simply connecting to the exact same index that already exists and it's calling describe index stats. And so I get back again, the vector count 896 that we just looked at. The fullness is still 0.0, .0 because we're not nowhere close to, to maxing it out and this is serverless. So it's going to essentially scale infinitely with our data as it grows. And then here's an alternate sanity check where you can see again, using Langchain to connect to the existing vector store and issuing the same simple query so I can sanity check that the document that comes back is what I expect, and it is. So I recommend doing something like this where when you are creating your data in just Jupyter Notebook or whichever piece of code you're going to use to do that, have a separate function, have a separate class, have a separate script or a separate CLI command where you can do some sanity checks on an existing data store without having to recreate it and do the re-upserts and all of that. All right, and with that, we have completed the data ingest piece of our video series and for building our RAG pipeline. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned because in the next video, we're going to go through the backend API route code that does the fetching of context from this data store in TypeScript and then uses that to provide it bundled with the prompt to the LLM to get back a response that is grounded in the truth of the context that it was provided.